Well, if you've tested positive for COVID-19, Wits University needs you. The institution is attempting to develop a rapid test kit that needs people for the study. Professor Elizabeth Main is the head of immunology at Wits University. She joins us now for more on this. Professor, good evening to you. What exactly do you actually want to test on these candidates? Um, so thank you very much for having me. Um, we are looking for people who tested positive for COVID and effectively what we're doing is we're creating panels of positive material that we can use to evaluate some of these rapid tests that are coming onto the market in South Africa. So are these tests antibody tests or are these tests, I think it's called the PCR test? So these are antibody tests. Um, these are the tests that test for uh, those little protein molecules that help to protect you against infection. So in other words, you need someone who actually has the antibodies within their body already. Exactly, exactly. So some of these tests have performed very poorly in some settings around the world. And it's important if we're going to use them in South Africa that we understand whether they work or not. Okay, and the tests that we're looking at, where are they coming from? Who's actually developing these tests at the moment? And um, there are suppliers from literally across the world. So there are some suppliers from China. Um, obviously, they have some experience with this virus. Um, we also have uh, suppliers from, uh, the, from across Europe. And also, there are some uh, centers that are starting to produce these tests in America as well. So, um, and we are also looking at some South African suppliers who are also looking at developing these tests. Are there any risks associated with being involved in the study? I mean, I imagine you're going to have to put up with a, a pinprick or something in your arm, but apart from that, is there anything more that you would go through? Um, so, effectively, the, it's just going to be the discomfort of having a routine blood draw, so venous blood. Um, obviously, we also ask some people to donate some swabs. Um, they can be a little bit uncomfortable as well, but um, we protect the privacy of our participants very closely. Um, and effectively all of the samples will be anonymized. And I think that's something very important for people to remember. We won't be able to give you the results of the antibody test. So because we don't know that these tests work, we can't tell you whether you had antibodies or not. And I think some people um, volunteer in the hopes that they'll find out whether they're immune or whether they have antibodies. And unfortunately, we can't always tell them that information. One of the things that we know about the antibody tests that we have at the moment is that they are very quick, but they're also not as good. In other words, they need the body to react first. Are we, and that creates the antibodies that you then test for rather than the PCR test. Are we likely to get to a situation where an antibody test will be able to tell you, you know, within a few hours of being infected or within a few days of being infected rather than that lag that we have at the moment? So... Uh, the antibody tests do work very quickly, so a matter of minutes, never mind a matter of hours. Um, but we know that the, an the antibody response is typically produced later on in infection. Um, so certainly for IgG, we only see antibodies forming strongly after about day 10 after you first start feeling sick. So I don't think the antibody tests will altogether replace PCR. I think we have to be aware that PCR is the best test for diagnostic purposes, but there are other applications we could use it for. For example, if we want to have a vaccine and we we're looking at how the vaccine responds, then the antibody test would be important to help us decide whether the vaccine has been useful or not. Professor Elizabeth Main, thank you very much indeed, Head of Immunology at Wits University.